have you ever wondered about the thin line that separates honesty from dishonesty and how easily it can be blurred today we're on a journey to explore this intriguing concept through the lens of a compelling literary piece we're diving into the chapter a question of trust penned by the acclaimed author victor canning Canning's works are renowned for their rich narratives and thought-provoking themes, and this story is no exception. It's an essential part of our Class 10 English curriculum, not just for its riveting plot, but also for the profound life lessons it imparts. It challenges us to question our own perceptions of trust and deception, pushing us to delve deeper into the human psyche. As we journey through this tale, we'll uncover the thin veil that separates right from wrong and how easily one can slip from one side to the other. So, are you ready to delve into this captivating tale of trust and betrayal? In any story, characters play a vital role. So, who drives the narrative in A Question of Trust? First off, we have Horace Danby. He's not your typical protagonist. A gentleman in his 50s, Horace is a locksmith by trade but a thief at heart. He's quite likable, despite his criminal tendencies, and has a soft spot for books and roses. He's not what you'd call a hardened criminal, as he only commits theft once a year to support his love for rare books. Then we have the lady, a seemingly innocent character who turns out to be more than meets the eye. Her charm and sophistication are merely a facade hiding a sharp mind and a cunning nature. She plays a crucial role in the plot, adding an unexpected twist to the narrative. These two characters, with their unique quirks and unexpected choices, keep the story engaging and unpredictable. Now that we know our main characters, it's time to dive into the plot. What happens when a seemingly honest man has a peculiar hobby that isn't quite lawful? Today, we delve into the world of Horace Danby, a respectable locksmith with a side interest that lands him in a rather intriguing predicament. Horace is no ordinary locksmith. He's a man with an unusual annual ritual, a hobby that involves a bit more than just locks and keys. Horace plans a grand theft each year, not out of greed but to support his love for rare and expensive books. However, his approach to these heists is far from haphazard. He meticulously studies the houses he targets, their security systems, and the routines of their inhabitants. His preparation is so thorough that it's almost an art form in itself. This year, his chosen target is the stately Shotover Grange, a house filled with valuable treasures. Its owners are reputed to be away on holiday, making it the perfect opportunity for Horace to execute his plan. He uses his expertise as a locksmith to bypass the house's security system with ease, demonstrating the precision and care that he takes in his unusual hobby. However, as Horace is reveling in his success, an unexpected encounter throws a wrench into his well-oiled plan. A lady who introduces herself as the house's owner catches him off guard. Instead of panicking, Horace thinks on his feet. He plays along pretending to be a man from the alarm company there to check the security system. The lady seems to buy his story, allowing Horace to breathe a sigh of relief. But little does he know, this encounter is just the beginning of a series of events that will turn his world upside down. Horace Danby, the seemingly honest man with a peculiar hobby, finds himself in a situation that challenges his cunning and wit. He's managed to dodge a bullet once, but can he continue to outsmart those around him? But what happens next? Does Horace get away with his unusual hobby? Stay tuned to find out. We left off at a cliffhanger, didn't we? Let's unravel the rest of the story. As we delve deeper into the narrative, we encounter a twist that turns the tide of our tale. Remember our protagonist, Horace Danby? Yes, the somewhat respectable yet sly locksmith. He was about to pull off his annual burglary at Shotover Grange, believing he had the lady of the house under his control. But oh, how quickly the tables can turn. Now, the lady he thought he was manipulating was not the lady of the house at all. She was, in fact, another con artist playing her own game. The plot thickens. 
doesn't it? She tricks Horace into believing she's the owner of the house and what's more, she even convinces him to open the safe for her. The bewitching woman convinces Horace to hand over the jewels, promising not to report him to the police. Little did he know, he was a pawn in her game, a mere tool for her own grand theft. And so, our unsuspecting Horace, thinking he's outsmarted the lady, leaves the house, leaving his fingerprints everywhere. But wait, there's more. The real lady of the house returns to find her safe open and her jewels missing. The police are called and they find Horace's fingerprints all over the scene. Our protagonist is arrested much to his surprise and the lady con artist walks away scot-free with the jewels. Such a surprising turn of events, isn't it? What started as a seemingly straightforward tale of a cunning burglar morphed into a story of deceit and manipulation with our protagonist falling victim to another's crafty scheme. A twist in the tale indeed, but what does this story teach us? Every story has a deeper meaning, a lesson to learn. What does a question of trust offer? At its core, a question of trust is a tale that explores the intriguing themes of deception, trust and moral ambiguity. These themes are woven intricately into the fabric of the narrative, giving it a depth that extends beyond the surface level plot. Let's start with deception. Our protagonist, Horace Danby, is a master of deceit fooling others by appearing as an upstanding citizen while secretly harboring a pension for thievery. He uses his knowledge of locks and his charm to deceive people into trusting him, thereby enabling his criminal activities. This theme of deception is a constant undercurrent shaping the narrative and the character arcs within the story. Then we have trust, the flip side of deception. The story underscores how trust can be manipulated and exploited. Trust is depicted not as a virtue, but as a vulnerability, something to be used to one's advantage. This is seen in the way Horace Danby exploits the trust of the people around him, and ironically, how he himself falls prey to a similar manipulation. Lastly, we delve into the moral ambiguity of characters. None of the characters in A Question of Trust are entirely good or bad. They are complex, grey characters with their own flaws and virtues, Horace Danby, despite being a criminal, is portrayed as a sympathetic character, while this seemingly innocent lady turns out to be a criminal herself. This theme of moral ambiguity challenges the reader's preconceived notions of right and wrong, adding a layer of complexity to the narrative. So how does this all come together? Through the exploration of these themes, the story showcases the intricate dance between trust and deception and the blurred lines of morality. It forces us to question our own understanding of trust, deception and morality, urging us to look beyond appearances and not take everything at face value. Indeed, the story offers much food for thought, but how does it relate to our lives? Stories aren't just for entertainment, they often reflect aspects of our lives. How does a question of trust resonate with us? Well. Let's delve into this. A Question of Trust by Victor Canning is not just a story about a cunning man outwitting the system. It's about more profound aspects of our lives, trust and honesty. It's about how we perceive these virtues and how they are often manipulated in the real world. The story highlights the irony of trust. Here we see a professional thief, Horace Danby who is trusted by society because he puts on the facade of a respectable businessman. It makes us question, isn't it ironic that the very people we trust might be the ones betraying us? This is a stark reflection of real life where appearances often deceive and those who appear trustworthy may not be so. Moreover, the story makes us ponder over the concept of honesty. Horace Danby, despite his criminal activities, considers himself an honest man because he never steals more than what he needs. It brings us to an interesting question. Can honesty have different shades? Can one be honest and dishonest at the same time? It's a thought-provoking question, isn't it? This tale is a mirror to society, reflecting how easily trust can be manipulated and how the notion of honesty can be subjective. It is a reminder that trust must be earned and not given lightly. 
It also nudges us to rethink our definition of honesty. Is it black and white or does it exist in various shades of grey? A question of trust is not just a tale of crime and deceit. It's a story that makes us question our perceptions, our beliefs and our understanding of trust and honesty. It invites us to look beyond appearances and to reevaluate who we deem trustworthy. And that brings us to the end of this intriguing tale. Remember, not everything is as it seems, especially when it's a question of trust.